All right, Bob, questions. Let's do it. What do you say? Yep. Anonymous patron wrote in and that survey we sent out. Uh -huh. It says, hi, hi, Bob and Kirk. I had this weird experience a few weeks ago. For several months, I desperately wanted to hug someone. And a few weeks ago, it finally happened. I had a big, tight hug with a good friend of mine. But, it didn't, but I didn't feel relieved, happy, or sad, or safe. I felt nothing, physiologically or psychologically. Nothing at all. Why did I feel nothing, even when I needed a hug so much? Could it be a feeling of emptiness? Am I lacking a connection with some part of myself? Bob, what do you think? Jeez, I don't know. Want to try another hug? Like, why not? Do you have to have a reason? I, I don't know. I don't know what to... Yeah, maybe you're out of touch with yourself. That's a possibility. Maybe you're depressed. Yeah. Oof. Sometimes when you ask me these questions and I'm just like, uh, okay, what's I mean, on? if you don't know, you don't know. You could just be like, you know what? I don't know. I mean, I, I feel like you threw some good stuff out there. Okay, well, that's a good start, yeah. Was, what I would say is, along the lines of what Bob's saying, it's, it's really hard to know. Uh, the first hypothesis that comes to mind, given what you said, is that you had a urge to get a hug, which tells me that you're wanting connection, you're wanting affection, and you lack connection with other people. And you had a manifestation of that lack of connection and distance as an urge to hug someone, rather than maybe noticing your broader need, which is literally affectionate action every day. So you manifest it as I want a hug and then you, you describe it as you were waiting weeks for a hug, which tells me like, how come the, the hug didn't happen the very next minute after you had the urge? Because hopefully, I mean, ideally we would be in social situations, relationships where as soon as we need a hug, we get a hug within, within seconds after we need, that's, that's the ideal. That's, that's the way we flourish. That's what our needs involve. I mean, it'd be like saying, I, I got thirsty one day and then like three weeks later I had a drink of water. It's like, well, there's something wrong there, right? And then when you finally got the hug, you were you didn't feel anything about it because possibly it was such an anomaly in your life. You didn't know how to accept it or something, or it didn't really meet your expectations because the hopes and dreams and needs that were happening were much, much bigger than just a single hug with a friend. So that would be my first guess, but I don't know. There's, there's a lot of possibilities as to why that'd be. Depression could also be another thing. Soft Noodles says, what is your favorite trip you've ever been on? Bob, what's your favorite trip? Wow. We went to Maui once. That was really cool. Um, What'd you like about it? I like that I could walk down, let's see, about 150 yards and get a cup of coffee and sit by the ocean and watch the waves and write. That was really cool. Um, and then we also saw sea turtles. That was pretty cool. Hmm. We, I, we, how, every, year, every, every other time I come on here, we talk about Italy. Italy was a really great trip. Mm -hmm. They have a lot of old stuff in Europe. Did you know that? It's like really <laughs> old. It's really cool. <laughs> yeah. Uh, we went to France once. That was fun. Um, and French people in Paris, I found them to be really, really nice for us, even, mm -hmm. you know, sort of dumb American who doesn't speak French. Uh, the meanest person I met in Paris was an American. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what she didn't like about us, but she didn't. And um, what do you mean? What happened? Uh, I don't remember what the interaction with them was, but they were just seemed like annoyed with us and were rude. But everybody else we met in Paris was really nice. Well, what was the context? Were they uh, an employee? Yeah, somewhere? they worked at Starbucks. They were oh, the, oh, right, right, right. Yeah, at the counter at Starbucks. So how did you, what vibe did you get? It's just like this sort of annoyed, like, I don't have time for you. You're a dumb American kind of, whatever. She, I mean, it wasn't a very long interaction. She was just sort of terse and cold. And we both, I don't even remember the bits of it, except that we both noticed that she seemed to be, you know, displeased with us. Huh. And, but, you know, Parisians get this, I think they get this rap as being like, you know, snobby or um, annoyed with, you know, pedestrian americans yeah that's totally dumb i i found people in paris really nice yeah a great city well one it's millions of people so yeah, you point. can't really generalize yeah right two i think it dates back to 
something in our past that we felt as Americans that they were looking down on us or something like yeah. in the distant past or something. Right. My favorite trip that I have been on was going to Santorini with Stacy in Greece. That pops into my head. Also London with Stacy. Oh, that's I, right. You I loved really, your London trip. I really loved London. Um, we also had a really great New York City trip a, a while back. Um, that was a lot of fun. Lots of things that we did. Stacy used to live in in New York City, so she knew a lot of the places and has friends there that we were staying with. And anyway, so next question, listener Layla, a similar question: Have the two of you ever been on a vacation together? And the only one I could think of was going to La Push at least a couple times. Oh, we went to La Push once. Well, we also went to Chelan on a friend trip. We went to Whistler skiing. Oh, we went to Whistler. I forgot about that. Yeah, I didn't ski, though, so I didn't see you much. <laughs> yeah, so that those trips are all a long time ago. They were. Like 20 years ago. Yeah. Or longer, even. And so we haven't been on a trip in a long time. No. But I totally forgot about those other ones. Yeah, yeah. that's interesting. And then they say, where would you like to go? And what I was thinking of is taking me to wine country in France. Oh, because you said it's really great out there. Oh, go to the Champagne region. Oh, yeah. that'd be really cool. Because you you talk about it very glowingly. Oh yeah, and it also seems like you kind of know the, the 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 lay of the land. I, I know a little bit, a little bit, but and I, but I love Champagne, and it is a fascinating place. These caves that are made out of chalk stone. They look, feel like you're touching a chalkboard when you touch them, and they're hundreds and hundreds of years old, and just rooms full of wine just stacked up it's like more wine than you can imagine and uh, un- unbelievable and and the beautiful cathedral there it's this town it's spelled r h e i m s but i never say it right so i'm not even going to say it now like rom or ren or something i i don't know how to say it i i've tried it if you, I, I get corrected it, every it's time. spelled reams but it's not yeah but, but it's, you don't promise. Oh, well, we were at the train station in Paris and we wanted to go there. And so we're <laughs> saying to the person in our crappy French efforts, um, can we go to this? You know, we want to take it to this town. And she just looked at us like she didn't know what we were talking about. And I don't think that she was like being no uh, obstinate in any way. I think. Well, because we, when French people see that word, they, they don't see, see yeah. what I see. So, yeah. Yeah, anyways, well, we, we did get a ticket there. There's a beautiful cathedral there. It's called Notre Dame. looks very similar to the Notre Dame in Paris. And they have an entire window devoted to um, champagne making, like just the stained glass window of the various stages of champagne. It's beautiful. We actually have a poster of that at, at home. Actually, their postcards mounted beautifully. Um, just There's, a, there's a, a window there by Marc Chagall in the cathedral. Mm-hmm. And it's just, the whole place is just, it's just like magic. Hmm. Really cool. Yeah, I'd go there. Sure. Yeah. So actually, it's been a while since we had a patronly episode. So let's answer the rest of the questions beyond the patron Whoa. situation. So if you want to hear this whole episode, become a patron of the podcast and you will be able to hear this whole episode. Otherwise, this episode will end now. And I'm really sorry for that. <laughs> Why should people become a patron, Bob, if, if they're th- on the fence? Oh, well, you get to hear a lot of episodes. If you're interested in hearing personal stuff, there's most of my personal stuff is on the patrons only. Arguably, your best episodes are are patron only ones. What are you saying? I I have some episodes that aren't really as good as others? No, no, (laughs) they're good. It's it's, It's true. It's true. The the depth that you can do on a patrons only because it's like not the entire universe that's going to hear it. Mm -hmm. It's safer. So it's, it's just safer to be deeper. Yeah. So become a patron. Do it now. (laughs) 